Hello, sisters. Welcome to the Sacred Medicine Podcast, weaving powerful, soulful practices into functional medicine. Step into this beautiful space of devotion and explore everything from nurturing foods, rituals, sexuality, and awakening your innate sensuality. It is time to own your radiance. This is the Sacred Medicine Podcast. Hello and welcome back to another week of the Sacred Medicine Podcast. I am your host, Margaret Romero, and this week we have Suzanne Oshima. She is the host of Single in Stilettos Podcast, as well as our dating and relationship coach. So today we talk about so many different topics when it comes to dating. So if you're single, you have to tune into this. We talk about not only some dating challenges, which we all know, what some of those could be, but also we talk about your profile, um, what it should really be saying in there to attract the kind of man that you really want, how to avoid burnout. You know, if you're like dating and you're really militant about it and you're like, I need to have like three, four dates per week, five dates per week. Eventually you really, you do, but you burn out. You're like, Oh, I don't want to do this. So We talk about how to avoid burnout. We also talk about, you know, when would be a good time to engage in intimacy with someone? When is a good time for that? And what to do with men who only want like bikini pictures or naked photos of you? Um, So we, that, her answers were brilliant. So we talk about so much more and also about even phone calls, um, how to deal with phone calls and not to be on the phone for hours and hours at a time and, um, the pitfalls of that. So hope you enjoy this conversation on dating and on to the show. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Sacred Medicine Podcast. I am your host, Margaret Romero, and today's guest is Suzanne Oshima. She is a dating and relationship coach, as well as the host of Single in Stilettos Podcast. Thank you so much for being here today, Suzanne. Thanks so much, Margaret, for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, I love your podcast, and I wanted to really dive in today about just all things dating, online dating. Um, I just love to know kind of some of the things that you've been seeing, but why don't we start with, you know, I I have a lot of girlfriends who have currently online dating um, as well as myself, and there are definitely some challenges. <laughs> what are you finding to be the biggest dating challenges um, that you see just come up very frequently for you and, and the well, women that you coach? Well, so, um, you know, with dating, there's always going to be challenges. And no one ever said dating was easy. And anyone that says that is lying because it is harder. Because quite honestly, dating has changed in the last 20 years. I mean, mm-hmm. in the last 20 years, there wasn't online dating. And now there's online dating. And now not only is there online dating, there's a million apps and online sites, right? Right. And and so, and then you ha- add in technology. So, phones, texting, everything is honestly become so much more difficult. And so it can be challenging at times. And so sometimes, you know, I just want to tell the ladies out there that I know sometimes it can get discouraging, but sometimes it's good to take a step back. Like with online dating, if you're not getting the results that you're looking for, what I always tell women is that usually it's not the site. It usually has actually nothing to do with the site. And I know everyone out there is probably surprised that I'm saying that. It actually has to do with your profile. And Mm. when I say that is, I will tell you, 
because I work with both men and women, um, and I can look at a woman's profile, I somehow miraculously change into a man's point of view, and I can look at a woman's profile and tell her exactly why she's not getting the results that she wants. And so um, one of the first things, tips that I will give the ladies is this. Well, let me back step before I give you this first tip is you want to remember that your online profile is your advertisement for you. And so it should really be the best version of you, right? Right. And men are visual. And so one of the first things they look at is that first profile photo. And so that first profile photo, I'll give you some tips on that. It should be, number one, a headshot, because remember, it's shrinking down to a thumbnail size. So you want it to be close up. But number two, you want to have your hair done, your makeup done, and you want to have something colorful on top. And what I always recommend to the ladies is to wear red because it's actually been scientifically proven that men are attracted to the color red. So why not give yourself an advantage? Mm -hmm. And if you look at other women's profiles, like if you compare what's out there, I want women to do a reverse search and you'll see like what attracts your eye. What, you know, is the women that are have black and white photos or where they're wearing all black, it attracts the eye. You want color because it attracts the eye. Mm -hmm. And so that's the most important thing because that's going to entice a man to click through to the next thing. And the next place he goes is your second photo. And that second photo should be a full length photo and it should be you dressed up in a dress because a man, quite honestly, wants to see what your body looks like. I'm not yes. going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> and before everyone hems and haws and says, oh, well, I got to lose 10 pounds or whatever it is, ladies, be the best version of yourself. Every man is attracted to something different. Not every man wants a skinny mini. Not every man is attracted to, you know, a curvy one. Every man is attracted to something different. So what I always say to ladies, be the best version of yourself and don't wait to lose weight to get out there and date. Because all too often I hear, oh, I just need to lose 10 pounds before I get out there and date. You don't. Right, right. Because when you lose that 10 pounds... What's going to happen is you're going to go, oh, I just need to lose three or four more and then I'll be fine. You're never going to be perfect. <laughs> That's right? true. And, you know, I have noticed that men do want a full length. They always want to see, they, they don't just want headshots. As, no. And it's, you know, but I think that sometimes I even get asked for like bikini, like a bikini photo. And I don't, I really don't take full length pictures of myself in a bikini. So that's kind of a pain. What do you, you know, what do you say to the guy when he wants a full length and he's asking for something like a bikini or a beach shot? Well, <laughs> first of all, any, first of all, a man shouldn't dictate what you're putting out there. Okay. If you don't feel comfortable sending him a bikini shot, and I highly recommend, by the way, that you don't. I don't right. care how interested you are in this man because you're sending the wrong message. You're leading with your body instead of the full package. And you mm -hmm. want a man that's going to, number one, obviously be attracted to you physically. But you also want a man that's attracted to you emotionally and what's on the inside. And if you lead with a bikini shot, most men that just want the bikini shot, quite honestly just want to have sex. Right, right. And so if you don't send it to him and he still wants to get to know you, that tells me that he wants to get to know you and it's not just about your body. Yeah, exactly. And to me, I don't, you know, the thing is, is that um, what I always say to women is, you know, as you get to know a man, then you can reveal more. I mean, you should be privileged if you get a bikini shot, right? It's not something you get right away. You have to earn that. Exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. So, but a full length in a dress is totally fine. And if that's not good enough for him, then he's the wrong man for you. Right. He's not interested in getting to know you. Yeah, you're right. Totally right. 
All right. So profile and then, so, and what about some of the things that need to be included in that? I, I know that you don't want it to be like a, um, like you're going, you know, for a job interview and saying all of these, I don't know. I, I don't know how in depth you need to go. It, sometimes it doesn't allow you to really give all that much. But what is it? What are some of the things that men are really looking for when they're reading a profile that they're like, oh, you know, where they can possibly um, develop a, a little connection there while reading your profile? Right. Well, I, and I know, ladies, it's really hard to um, sometimes write about yourself. So I'll just give you some general pointers that can help you is number one is don't write generic sentences. And when I say generic, I, I when I look at someone's profile and I see something like, I love going on vacation to beaches and I love taking long walks and I love dancing and um, I love going out to good restaurants. That's basically anybody and everybody. And it's so boring. It's It, it tells me nothing about you. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and don't say, you know, I love watching sunsets or men's biggest complaint you're going to laugh is when a woman says, oh, I can get dressed up in a little back dress or I can wear jeans. And men are sick of seeing that on women's profiles. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you could say it in a different way, you know, is by describing the things that you like to do. And so what I always tell women is, number one, that first sentence that you write is the most important. It's just like a book. You need it to capture his attention. Okay. And then write about things that you're passionate about, things that, um, uh, trips that you've gone on and what you loved about the trips. Like I have people that will write, Oh, you know, I love traveling. My favorite places are Italy, Mexico, and say the Caribbean, right? And that's great. But tell me a little bit more. Like for me, Italy is actually my favorite country that I've been to. I would write about how I just love the culture and the people and how they're so friendly and how the food is honestly the most amazing Italian food I've ever had in my life. So I would describe that. And so you want to give descriptions so it you want to paint a picture. It's like painting a picture so that someone can really get an idea of the things that you really love and that you're passionate about because you want a man to have those me too moments. As he's scanning your profile, he goes, me too. I can relate to that or I can connect to that because that's what's going to connect to him and make him want to message you. Got it. Yeah. Really important with the visuals. Um, okay. So what about when you're, you know, you're having, you know, you're, you're getting, uh, messages back and you're setting up dates and then it's like one date after another. And you're just like, uh, like, no, that's, it's just not right. Like that guy, you know, there just wasn't any connection and you slowly just start to get burnt out. And then at some point you're like, I can't, I have to stop doing this right now. And then you give yourself a break, which I've definitely done. And how do do you recommend women's kind of not, uh, how do you, well, okay, let's start with this. How do you prevent getting burnt out on on dating and like going out a couple of times a week? Sometimes it could be like two, three times, four times a week. Women are setting up dates and, you know, it's a numbers game is what we always hear. So how do we prevent getting burnt out on this stuff? First of all, if a woman is going out on dates two to four times a week, I commend you because I know that's not easy to do, especially, you know, when you have your busy career and you've got a lot of other things going on. And if, if you're divorced and you have kids, you know, that can be really hard. So if you're going out two to four times a week, that's great. Um, I will tell you, it, it, it is, and I know everyone hates hearing this, it is a numbers game. The more dates you, you go out on, the closer you're going to get to meeting the right man. And this is what I would say, because I see all too often where people will discount a man before he should be discounted, like saying no to the second date. And what I mean by that is they go out on a first date. And for some reason, everybody expects like sparks to fly, like this major (laughs) chemistry to happen. And that, oh, my God, I met my Prince Charming. 
<laughs> and that's not how it always happens. And so what I always say to women is this, is that unless there was honestly something God awful wrong with him, you should go out on a second date because sometimes people are really nervous on a first date and they're not really themselves. So you want to give them a second chance and see if there's a connection there. And quite honestly, you're going to hate what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say go out on a second and third date. And if by the third date, there's still nothing there, then, then you can end it. But the reason why I say that is because I've had clients that actually didn't like the man they went out with on the first and second date. By the third date, they felt a connection and they ended up marrying this man. Mm. And so again, because women tend to, um, it's more about we fall in love with the man that we have a connection, an emotional connection to. And as we get to know him, we start to get more connected to him. And so sometimes that takes time. A first date, you're not going to always have that connection. It's not going to be, you know, fireworks and all of that on the first date. So, um, but I totally get it. If you get burnt out, because that can happen, is do a lot of self-care a lot of self-care. You can take a step back, take that break, but don't take too long of a break because I've seen where people take too long of a break and then they don't want to get back out there. Okay. How, how long is too long? Um, when I see someone take like three to four months off for six months or a year, because it, and I've actually seen quite honestly, this might shock some people is I've seen people take five years or more off. And oh, then wow. It, That's a long time. <laughs> Yeah. And then it's hard. I will tell you my, um, it's funny. This just came up with my business coach. I have a business coach and she just talked about this today is people keep asking her how she met her husband. She's now married. And she said, you know what? I took it seriously for a year. And she said, I literally went out on five dates a week. And she did this and then she met her husband and she got married. But if you're committed, it can happen, but you have to be committed. Yeah, I can't imagine going on a five day to even three or it just sounds like an overwhelming amount of time. It can be. But, you know, the other thing to do, too, what I find a lot of people miss this one step that can actually help them so they don't waste time dating men that aren't worthy of their time is you want to screen them before you even get to the first date. And that you should do, use a better screening process through the, t the email messages. I always say two to three email messages and then move it to texting and then a phone call. Because I, uh, you can learn a lot about someone in a couple of messages and through a phone call and whether or not that's someone worthy of you meeting in person. Totally. Totally. And what do you think about uh, like FaceTime or Skyping with them? You're going to laugh at what I'm going to say about <laughs> that. Is I don't know about you, but there's something with FaceTime that I feel like no one looks really awesome on FaceTime. <laughs> and so <laughs> unless you look absolutely fantastic on FaceTime, I don't recommend it. I really don't. Okay. But I recommend a phone call. I do recommend a phone call because I think that can tell you a lot about somebody. Yes, definitely. But some, you know, I've also had uh, instances where those phone calls can just like linger and go on and on. And I'm like, when is this guy going to ask me out on a date? Oh, my God. I'm so glad you brought that up, Margaret, because I'm going to give you the best tips on how to do this. Okay. So the first thing is that phone call, you don't want it to be more than 20 minutes, 30 minutes max, but do not stay on the phone for hours. And so this is how you preface the phone call is, is when he says, oh, can I give you a call sometime? Or yeah, that would be great if you want to give me a call tonight. And he says, great, I'll call you at eight. Like, let's just say he texts you and says, I'll call you at eight and go, that's perfect because I have to be somewhere. I'm meeting a friend out at um, nine o'clock. So I have to leave by eight 30. And I don't care if you're not, you make it up because you don't want this <laughs> phone call to be a long phone call because you need to save something for the first date. Right? Right. Right. 
So then you get on the phone and you talk to him and, and you know, he already knows that you have to go. So there's not going to be this awkward thing of, oh, I have to go at 830, right? Because you already prefaced it. So then when it gets closer and he's not asking you out going, God, you know, I'm really enjoying getting to know you. As you know, I have to leave at 830, but it would be great to continue this conversation in person. So you're opening the door and saying, if you ask me out, I will say yes, Mm -hmm. but you're not taking the masculine role because too many strong independent women take the role of asking a man out. You don't want to do that is you want still want him to ask you out because you want the man to become the pursuer of you, not you pursuing him. And so that gives him the open door. And if he, he should ask you out at that time. If he does not ask you out, or maybe he'll say, great, I'll text you and we'll figure out a time when we can get together. That's fine, too. But if he doesn't ask you out after you say that, move on. It's next because you want a man that takes the lead and runs with. I said I would say yes, because some men, quite honestly, it's so I don't get it, but they actually want a pen pal. And that's not what you're looking for. So Mm -hmm. move on. Exactly, exactly. Okay, great tip. Great tip there. So, you know, I know you're based out of New York City. Um, what, what what do you think are, are there any, I don't know, different t- challenges by, you know, living in this huge 8 million people? You would think that it's so, it, it wouldn't be hard to meet someone even when you're out you know, after work, having drinks at happy hour or something. Um, Are there any specific places where you think women should or try to be um, aside from hanging out, you know, during happy hour after work or something like that, that could work where you can potentially find or talk to someone? Well, first thing I want to address, because you brought up something, Margaret, about, um, you know, the challenges of meeting someone like in New York City, because there's 8 million people, right? And I just want to say, I want to address that, because I hear this complaint a lot, especially from women in New York. But quite honestly, I hear complaints from women all over the United States and all over the world, because I work with women all over the world. Oh, awesome. Okay. So everybody has something about where they live, like... I'll tell you the biggest complaint I hear about New York is that, oh, my God, I can't meet a a man here because there's more single women in New York than there are single men. So that's why I haven't met a man yet. And I'm like, really? Because in a city of eight million people, you there are so many single men. It doesn't matter how many single women there are. You just have to be smarter about it. And what Mm -hmm. I find is that if I dig a little bit deeper, is that the person is either doing the wrong things to meet the right man, or they're so closed off. Because Margaret, you and I both live in New York. And for those of you that don't live in New York, sometimes people in New York be a little too closed off. And then they can't understand why they're not meeting men out. And what I say to women is you have to open up your energy no matter what city you live in because it doesn't matter, is opening up your energy and start talking to everybody and anybody and be friendly and say hi and ask a question, open the door to conversation to everybody, because when you open up your energy, you're going to find more men will approach you. And it's true. I have tested this out myself. And so trust me, <laughs> it does work when your energy is closed off. And I want to give examples of your energy being closed off because I bet a lot of women out there are going, my energy is not closed off. I bet you you're doing stuff that you don't even realize is closing off your energy is number one. Men tell me this all the time. They will not approach a woman that's on her cell phone, like scrolling through it because they think like they're bothering her. That's right. a barrier. Yes. Or if you have your iPod on and you have earphones on, that's a barrier. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you don't make eye contact or smile, that's a barrier. So you want to let down these walls and start talking to people. Again, in this day and age of technology, it's so funny. With our cell phones, computers, and iPads, it's connected us. But in a virtual way, in real life, it's actually closed us off from meeting people just organically. 
So I'm going to challenge everybody to put away that cell phone when you're out alone and don't feel like that's your security blanket. Start talking to people and getting curious and and just getting to know different people around you. And I mean that not just at bars. I mean when you're standing in lunch in line to get lunch, when you're at um, at the bank, at Starbucks, wherever you are, we've become so closed off. We don't talk to people around us. So true. I know. I know. And that's and I know that's everywhere in the world. But sometimes New Yorkers are like you just walk around. People are looking down at their phones. They've got their headphones on. They're just kind of oblivious to whoever's around, you know, rushing to get from one place to another. Uh huh. I know. And it's, that's the thing is that then you got to find places where people are more relaxed. Like it, I'll give you an example. Um, like if you have a dog, take your dog to a dog park and start talking to the people around you that have dogs. I mean, a lot of guys have dogs and you should start. And most people go to the same dog park and men love to talk about their dogs. When I had a dog, <laughs> I used to talk to everybody. <laughs> Okay, that's a great idea. I'm a cat person, so that wouldn't necessarily work for me. But I love that idea, and because um, when you know, I I see lots of good looking men um, everywhere I go, and if you're in New York, it's really if they're on the subway and you're like, oh, he's really cute, no ring, and you can't approach him if he's got his headphones on. I don't know. It just I wouldn't because it just seems like I would be very intrusive if I were at a maybe going out after work, a different story. Most people are like chatting it up with their friends and they're not really, you know, have headphones in. Yeah. So the, the subway is a little weird. I mean, I do know you're going to laugh. I actually know people that have met on the subway. It takes a lot of guts. If you have the guts, you go for it. But um, that one could be a little bit difficult. And it's, you add in the subway and then you add in headphones and it's it's two barriers to entry. But if you're standing on the subway platform and you're waiting for a train, you can ask them a question about, does this train stop at xyz stop right even if even if you know it does stop at that stop <laughs> so what you're trying to open the door to a conversation exactly exactly yeah i think those are great those are really good good tips um cause, and especially because when we are looking down at our phone a guy's not necessarily going to approach me if i if i don't have eye contact with him Right. And then quite honestly, in this day, day and age of sexual harassment, there are quite honestly, some men are afraid that, you know, a woman's going to be like, get away from me. And, you know, who do you think you are approaching me? So that's why I always say to women is if you open up the door by just asking a question or making eye contact and smiling, then he knows it's OK. It's like that green light of it's OK to approach me. It's OK to talk to me. OK, great. Um, let's see what else. So are there any other tips for women who are out there dating? Um, you know, uh, what about some signs that we need to look for that are a definite no, no. You mean like if the guy's a wrong, the wrong man for her? Yes. Ah, the, well, this is a great, this is a loaded question. I could go on for <laughs> years about this, but I'll try and top line this question. Um, so, yes, there's uh, one thing I want, want to address is, when, ladies, when you're out there dating, and let's just say you start dating a man in the early stages, so you've gone out on a couple of dates, and he starts to do this disappearing and reappearing act like, oh, he asks you out for this week. And then you, he says, oh, well, you know, I'll give you a call or I'll text you. And then you don't hear from him. And then you hear from him another week and a half later. And he says, oh, what are you doing Friday night? And and then this kind of goes on for about a month and you kind of go along with it. And this is what I will say, ladies, is, you know. First of all, there's nothing wrong if he's dating other women because you should be, quite honestly, dating other men, right? Until mm -hmm. you're in an exclusive relationship. 
But if he constantly does this, where he does a disappearing, reappearing act, he doesn't follow through on things he tells you he wants to do with you, is stop making excuses for him. I see this happen all the time is where a woman will say, oh, well, he must be really busy with work. Now, men are pursuers by nature, no matter how busy they are. They will pursue a woman, and especially in this day and age of technology, it doesn't take that much effort to send a text, okay? So if a man is doing the disappearing and reappearing act and he's not following through on his words, the best tip I can give the ladies is this, is watch a man's actions, do not listen to his words. There's a lot of men out there that can tell you what you want to hear because they know the right things to say. And so that keeps you, you know, stringing along with him. But if a man is not following through on his actions, go by his actions. Mm -hmm. And and that will tell you a lot about the person and whether or not you need to keep dating him or you need to move on. All right. Yeah. I love, you know, these um, disappearing acts can Mm -hmm. be so annoying and frustrating. And um, I know you, I think you had mentioned something about, we'll get that to the end, but I know that you have a little gift for our listeners as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so we can add that at the end. So just don't let me forget about that. And all right. So dating in the city, you know, we've got these online, online, <laughs> tons of different online ones. Um, and, you know, Give us some tips to know when a guy just is really into it for just, you know, women's wanting a relationship, let's say. I know there's some women out there for sure that just want kind of booty calls. But there are some women that want, you know, the real deal. They want a guy that's really interested in them and kind of building a life together and having um, a vision together. I mean, when a guy starts to talk very quickly about wanting to be physical or um, starts to make advances, you know, at least for me, it's done. I'm, I'm already not interested and and it's pretty much over. Um, What do you suggest that women do? Or how do, how do we approach a guy that seems to be really, you know, that just seems to be his plan is to be physical pretty quickly. Um, You know, that's a great question because all too often um, there are so, so many men out there that just want sex. And so they, they've become more bold about uh, making it known about what they want, because quite honestly, there are women out there that will give it to to them that quickly. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, that doesn't mean all men are bad. Okay. So I want to make that very clear. Um, if a man is showing you his true intentions before you even meet, like he starts making sexual comments, right? Or even asking for that bikini pic, that is actually one of the indicators. Yeah. Like don't send that picture. Right. And, and if he makes sexual comments, ignore them and try and redirect him to getting to know you. Now, if he continues to make sexual comments before you meet, I wouldn't even meet him in person because it's obvious he just wants sex, okay? Now, let's just say you meet him and you have a date and like you described, Margaret, how he's getting more aggressive and things like that, is you're still in control. And I want women to remember this, is you're in control. You don't have to have sex with anybody that you don't want to. Okay. And that's really important. And so we can't fault a man for trying because men have higher sex drives than women. It's not to say that women don't have high sex drives, but men are more aggressive about it. Right. So if a man tries to have sex with you, he can try, but that doesn't mean you have to say yes. And so again, it's about redirecting him to getting to know you better. Instead of, you know what, I'm actually, 
I that's not what I'm looking for. If you're looking for just sex, that's not what I'm looking for. It's not to say that that wouldn't happen as I got to know someone, but I'm not ready for that. And I'm not the type to sleep with somebody this early and getting to know someone. So, you know, I, I think you're great. I would love to get to know you. Um, but if that's all you're looking for, that's not me. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Exactly. And so, so, and I tell this to the ladies is this, because a, a question I get asked a lot is the right time to have sex with a man. And, um, what I always tell the ladies is this, is if you're looking for sex, then have sex. Like you talked about Margaret, you know, some women are just out there looking, that's fine. Then just have sex. But, but I will say <clears throat> if don't look for a relationship after you have sex, because, Your chances of getting into a relationship, if you have sex way too early, uh, it goes down. It goes way down. And too many women will say to me, yeah, but my friend who had sex with her um, husband on the first date, they're now married. And I will tell you, that's the exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. It's not the norm. It is not the norm. It's not how men are wired. Men have sex with their bodies. Women have sex with their minds and we become infinitely more attached once we have sex and then we become more vulnerable and then we want more of a relationship and then when he can't give it to us, then we get panicked and we try to hold on tighter. So the best time to have sex with a man, and I I can't go into all the detail, but I'll give you the general rule of thumb. Um, because what I teach my clients is much more in depth than this, but the general rule of thumb is this, is when he has an emotional connection to you and he's gotten to know you on a deeper and emotional level and he shows that he cares about you, his actions match his words and that you feel the connection to him and that your, your needs are being met and that you feel Whatever your standards are, some women will have will only have sex with somebody they're exclusive with, and some women are okay with having sex with a man, any man, and he can have sex with any woman. Whatever your standards are, you need to make that clear before you have sex, not after. It's too late when you have the conversation after. It's an awkward conversation, in fact, when you have it after. So the right time is when he has that emotional, deep connection to you. Hmm. Okay. And that varies in how long that takes. And exactly. <clears throat> yeah. And that's exactly why I don't give a time frame. A lot of dating and relationship experts will give you a time frame, whether they say a certain number of dates or, you know, 60 to 90 days or whatever it is. I don't give time frames. I give that is the emotional connection and the bond because that's what's going to keep him connected to you for the longer term. It's not about the number of dates. Some people have no connection in 10 dates. So why would you have sex in 10 dates or whatever it is? Right, 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 right. Totally see your point there. All right. This is so, I love, I love this. I love talking about dating stuff. Um, Okay, so any last tips before we start to um, end our interview? No, the only thing I would just say to the ladies is, you know, I know sometimes it can get discouraging, but like Margaret, like you talked about, is just take that little break. Maybe it's a couple weeks off of dating and then just get back out there. Um, but don't take too long of a break because you have to ultimately think about what your end goal is. And if that's what you really want, you have to keep going. Yes, definitely. Well, how can the audience, um, how can they find you? They can go to singleinstilettos.com. And I'm actually giving the ladies my free new ebook. It's Why Men Disappear Without a Trace. And if you go to my website, it's right there, front page. <laughs> awesome. Why men, what's it called? Why Men Disappear Without a Trace? 
Mm -hmm. Because it's one of the top questions I get asked all the time is why do men disappear? And it's so hard for women to move on because I know for women when a man disappears and you don't have closure, it's so hard to move on. So I give the ladies out there, I give them five reasons why men disappear and how you can turn that around so that doesn't happen in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, are you also, where else are you? Um, that's your website. You have a podcast called Single and Stilettos. Mm-hmm. And are you on Facebook or uh, Instagram? Uh, f- Facebook, they can go They can go to Single and Stilettos. But it's honestly, if you just go to my website, singleandstilettos.com, that's where you can find everything. That's the best place. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I will let them know that I'll put everything will be in the show notes. All right. So let's see. I always end my interviews with three really quick questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. First one is what is one of your biggest indulgence indulgences that you don't mind spending a lot of money on? Going to see my homeopathic doctor. Oh, okay. It's I feel awesome every time I go see him, and it's a lot of money to go see him each time, but I don't care, and it's not covered by insurance, but it is so worth it to me because it puts me in that positive mindset space. It's like what I talked about. It's it's um, it's doing that self care and taking care of our taking care of our, um, myself. Awesome, awesome. Let's see. Oh, is there a book? that you are totally loving right now? Um, Oh, God, I forgot the name of it. And it's by Dr. Laura Berman. And it's about, I'm drawing, I'm drawing a total blank. It's her latest book. And it's, it's, it's about falling in love. And she talks about if you just go to amazon.com, and you look up Dr. Laura Berman, and, um, you look up her latest book, it has a light blue cover. um, But it's about scientifically, the chemistry to falling in love. And it's very interesting how she talks about certain things. And all of this stuff has been scientifically proven. So if you really want that competitive edge, then those are the types of books you should be reading. I'm actually looking it up right now. So we have a name to give to the listeners. And uh, is it called Quantum Love? Yes. <laughs> That's okay. it. Use That's your body's it. atomic energy to create the relationship you desire. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's a really good book. I, I've been reading it, and it's very interesting what she talks about. Oh, nice. All right. And... Last one is um, what? What's the your one of your favorite apps on your phone that you use all the time? Hmm, that's a good question. I don't, and I'm going to be completely honest. I'm a, I actually don't have a favorite app because. Um, I will tell you, I'm not one of those people, believe it or not, that's attached to my phone because I work all the time that I try to like disconnect. Okay. I mean, I I obviously use my phone, but I don't have a favorite app. I'm not that connected. I actually, when I'm out and about, I'm like, I like to be out and about and connect to people. (laughs) How about podcasts? Do you have a favorite podcast you listen to? No, I don't, but I will tell you, um, my business coach has the best morning uh, show Facebook live that she does every Monday through Friday on her Facebook page. And that is my favorite because it motivates me every morning. And it's Shanda Sumter, her hardcore business. She should actually turn it into a podcast because it's awesome. Shanda Sumter? Sumter. S-U-M. Yeah, S-U-M-P-T-E-R. Um, And it's on her Facebook fan page. It's Hardcore Business. Oh, nice. Yeah, and she does a Facebook Live every morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and it's only for 20 minutes, but I will tell you, it puts you in the right mindset every morning. Ladies, if you have your own business, this will put you in the right mindset every morning. Oh, I have to look at that. I love 
It is one of my routines I do in the morning is to either read something inspirational or listen to a podcast um, with something inspiration, inspirational. Um, I like uh, Brenda Bruchard. I don't know if you know who he is. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I also have <clears throat> his book. And I think I, I love starting my mornings that way. Yeah, I make sure I'm on every morning. And the nice thing is, is it's literally live and it's video. So you get to see her and show answer your questions and help you with your business if you're oh. having issues. So it's it's great. That sounds awesome. I love that. And she's your business coach? Yeah, she's my business coach. And I will <gasps> tell you, she has totally helped me with my business. I love oh. her. Oh, she sounds like a rock star. I have to, I'll look her up for sure. Well, Suzanne, thank you so much for spending the time answering all of these really great, juicy questions all about dating. And you also coach women and men, and they don't have to live in New York City. They live, they can live anywhere, and you do everything remotely. Is that right? That is correct. I work with both men and women, and um, I work remotely. I work with clients um, over the phone in the United States, or we work over Skype video, whichever the client prefers, and I work with people all over the world, and I love it. It's my passion. And do you work with um, primarily single women or also, you know, are you a marriage um, couples counseling type of thing or no? Yeah, I know. I don't work with couples. Um, If someone is looking for a great relationship coach, I do. I have people that I can recommend them to, but I don't work with couples. I work with all single men and single women. Okay. Okay, great. Well, it was so great connecting. I'm sure we will. And I would hope that our paths cross in the near future since we are neighbors. Yes. (laughs) Thanks again, and um, I so appreciate it. Thank you so much, Margaret, for having me on. This was a fun discussion. It was. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for joining me this week. I hope you got so much out of this conversation with Suzanne. It was such a pleasure to have her on. And I hope you now feel a little more um, armored as you go out into the dating world. Uh, To learn more about her, her services, and for all the show notes, head on over to margaretromero.com forward slash episode 54. And I also wanted to let you know, very excited um, to share that I have launched my new website, which is called, it's still margaretromero.com. So check that out totally new offerings. Um, It's actually going to be in a new space as well, which I happily can report that I have found my new office space. Thank you very much. And um, very excited to be in that space come November 1st. So if you haven't checked out the new website, head on over to margaromero.com and you will see all the services that I am now offering, uh, some of what I always offered and some new things that I'm actually integrating into my practice this time. Hope you're having the most amazing week and I will talk to you later. Much love and big kisses.